So this is from an old sketchbook that I do drawings all over New York, and this is Coney Island that I pencil drew, and then I erased it, and now I'm just inventing the whole thing off the top of my head from memories and redesigning the old Coney Island. I don't know what it looks like now. But this is circa 19, say 1988. So I picked up uh, a book from that period, Freaky Deaky by Elmore Leonard. And I'm just going to get the set the mood from uh, this Elmore Leonard book. Page 38. Mark, the hell's that supposed to mean? He heard Robin say, dark hair, brown eyes, nice body on the staff of the Michigan Daily, sold ad space. How about Mark the Mechanical Mouth? Mark Ricks, Skip said, sure, with the bullhorn. He'd lather up the students, get him chanting. The cops had come storming across the quad, and Mark had split for the Del Rio Bar. Man, you're bringing it all back. Two, four, six, eight, organize and smash the state. Robin was spray painting again, making waves, so Skip waited, thinking back. He could see a guy with dark hair and an Indian kind of headband on that corner by the undergrad library, the ugly, U-G-L-I, yelling through his bullhorn, a guy with him beating on a tom-tom. Skip said, one, two, three, four, Vietnam's the boss's war, with his mom paying his way through school, huh? Robin's voice said, he carried Chairman Mao's red book in the glove box of his red Porsche. She was looking this way now when Skip saw she had painted another name under Mark, Woody. Shit, I remember him, Skip said. Mark's big brother was always in the bag or stoned. Bigger but dumber, Robin stood there admiring her work. Woodrow Ricks, we used to call him the poor soul. Skip was nodding. I can see him, fat, sloppy dude with curly hair. He'd do this little wiggle and pull his pants out of his crack, kind of sissified. Afraid of the dark, Robin said. That's right. We'd turn the lights out on him and he'd have a fit. Hey, but he always had dough, huh? Mark would make him pay for everything. That's why Mark let him tag along. Mark would run out of money, he'd get Woody to call home, and Mom would send a check. You remember their house, the indoor swimming pool? It gave Skip instant recall. That's where we did it underwater. Yeah, we'd go there weekends to party. He grinned at the memory of that big glassed-in room, voices echoing. Everybody'd get smashed, tear their clothes off, and jump in the pool. Sometimes with our clothes on, Robin said, their mother used to lurk. Remember that? Never said a word to anyone, but you'd see her lurking. She was a boozer. Mark said she drank at least two-fifths a day. Skip closed his eyes against the naked light glare to rest them and listen to Robin tell him how Mark and his mom didn't get along. Mark being a little smarty pants, how Woody was her favorite, her little prince, nursed him till he was about 16 and they started drinking together. Skip grinned at that, heard how the dad was gone by then, divorced, kicked out without a dime, the money being on mom's side of the family. Her old man had invented hubcaps or some gd thing for the car business and made a fortune but when mom finally drank herself under and they had the reading of the will guess what skip opened his eyes mom's favorite made out woody scored something like 50 million robin said plus the house and mark got cut out for acting smart skip said picking on his brother well not entirely mark got two million and blew it trying to put on outdoor rock concerts in Pontiac, usually in the rain. He bought a theater, and now he does plays and musicals, I think with Woody backing him, Robin said. It's a second-rate operation, but it's showbiz. You know what I mean? Mark's a celebrity. People Magazine did a feature on him. Yippee turns yuppie. Sickly's radical, cleans up his act, and goes legit in regional theater. I couldn't believe it. They mentioned Elridge Cleaver. What he's doing now, Jerry Rubin, Rennie Davis, like Mark, was in the same league with those guys. You're pissed off, Skip said, because you never got your picture in the paper or in the post office. Wrong thing to say. Her eyes flashed at him. Sixties radical, my ass. Mark was nothing but a media freak. He played to the TV cameras, Skip said, being gentle with her now. Sweetheart, that whole show back then was a put-on. 
You're going to tell me we were trying to change the world? We were kicking ass and having fun. All that screaming about Vietnam and burning draft cards, that was a little bitty part of it. Getting stoned and laid was the trip. Where's everybody now? We've come clear around to the other side, joined the establishment. Some have, Robin said. Look at her telling him that with a straight face. Skip stared at the red name shimmering there on the wall, flashing at him. 1988, and so little has changed. <laughs>